A nation on the brink of bankruptcy. An economy in a meltdown. Sri Lanka, a country of 22 million people, once referred to as a tropical island paradise, is in free fall. This certainly is the worst economic crisis we have faced during this century and last century. It's going to be a long-lasting, drawn-out crisis, and we really have to prepare for that. Sri Lanka has defaulted on all foreign debts. Its access to international financial markets has been cut off. The rupee's gone into a tailspin and the spiraling inflation. Cities and towns are submerged in darkness for hours with no fuel to produce electricity. Cooking gas, medicine, milk powder and other essential commodities are short in supply. How could a nation slide into disaster and chaos so fast? A documentary. Sri Lanka meltdown. We're on the trail of a mystery. Who's dotted around this verdant country? You just need to know where to look. What we discover, what the truth is, might well have implications for the global cost of living crisis. Sri Lanka's Hambantota port was built with Chinese investment. Travelling across Hambantota, it's clearly not just the port which has got Chinese investment. We're just arriving at the Mahinda Rajapaksa Cricket Stadium. Let's have a look. It costs tens of millions of pounds to build, but is struggling to recoup its construction costs. Oh, and it's named after the president's brother. We're still in Hambantota, and here's another project, the hospital, also built with Chinese money. This project, too, has been linked to alleged kickbacks to members of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa's family. And let's not forget the international airport and a vast convention centre. Chinese investment also extends up northwest to the capital, Colombo. Port City is a stretch of reclaimed land on the city's shoreline, intended to be a new special economic zone. It was built with Chinese investment cash and is now around half owned by a Chinese company. Anywhere in the world, uh, this type of building, it's an icon of the country. This may be the only food these children have today. Everyone is here for a free meal from charity. With poverty soaring, one in five Sri Lankans are going hungry. And families stuck living in utter misery for a few days. The UN estimates 70% of people are missing a meal every day. Sri Lankan government, the president is definitely uh, you know, responsible for the crisis that we are in. The currency has crashed and prices for everything are sky high. And a lot of Sri Lankans blame the government and President Gotabaya Rajapaksa. There have been weeks of protests across the country. The Prime Minister, Mahinda Rajapaksa, who's the president's brother, has quit. And things have gotten pretty violent. <laughs> Government supporters stormed the main protest camp in Colombo. Our 
almost about 20,000 20, came with sticks, heavy sticks, and they beat all of us. Anti-government protesters set fire to the homes of some ruling party officials and stormed the prime minister's compound. He had to be rescued by the army. Several people have been killed and hundreds have been wounded. It's a, a, a economic crisis that was brought on by a political crisis and now we're just generally in. Sri Lankans may have risen up and demanded change, but this is their new president. I would like to bring everyone together. A close ally of the one they've just thrown out, even if he is now, it seems, disowning him. The president-elect, the people say they want to have change. You are an old friend of the Rajapaksas. How can you be different? How am I old friend of the Rajapaksas? When did I know the Rajapaksas? I've been opposing them all this time. You come here today and tell me I'm a friend. You You're ask not a any friend of the Rajapaksas? No, you ask any of them. that, that uh, Prime Minister Vikramasinghe, who has been known to be a liberal man, he, we have always seen him as a liberal. And uh, he, when he was Prime Minister in previous administrations, he has never been the president. When he was Prime Minister, he ruled with a light hand, so we trusted him. But now that he has become president and he is trying to deploy the military against the people, we are... crisis and the anger that brought all sections of Sri Lankan society to the streets will not be easily swept aside. They have no solution for this economic downfall and people are suffering 
as a result of that now people are in the street they are struggling against this particular government so as we youth we struggle and we fight for the peace and we fight for the freedom we fight for the voiceless people this is the police no soldiers came and brutally uh, beaten uh, school protesters and destroyed some IT camps and those things and take over the uh, place there behind us and uh, some of the protesters in the hospital they are badly injured and some of arrested and also lawyers are also arrested and I think president is a uh, coward and he took cowardly action against the peaceful protesters. Ranil, you are not too big for us. After taking the oath as president, you started with oppression. You started by warning the people. And we will respond to your oppression, your threats and your thugs peacefully and democratically. Against peaceful protesters runs contrary to international law. And we urge authorities to immediately halt the use of such force. All Sri Lankans have the right to freedom of expression, peaceful assembly, and the right to participate in public affairs. Somebody posting a Facebook status criticising a government could lead to them being detained and questioned for a number of hours. Now the default position is people don't trust the police. The use of lethal force should always be your last resort, not your first response. We were worried about our lives. peacefully protesting them. After like 30 minutes, a bus came and parked right in front of us. There were police officers with gas masks and they forcefully dragged our friends into the bus. When our friends are being taken away, we ask, why are we being taken away? Why are the police arresting us? Is there any kind of court order? What are the charges against us? We just inquired, we just asked. But there was no such kind of court order, no mentioning about arresting. They were kidnapping us. I couldn't walk, so I came to admit to the hospital. Same like me, lots of people on a queue for get the field done. <sighs> While I'm to the ask about my token to get the number, so the reason only eight policemen brutal me. I need justice. I request human rights and get me up for justice. It won't be happened for anyone else in Sri Lanka hereafter. I need justice. You must know the difference between charity and justice. Today, the Sri Lankans don't want charity. They want justice. And here's the difference, my friends, between charity and justice. Charity is directed at the effects of injustice. Charity focuses on the immediate needs of the individual. Charity does not change the status quo. So someone here and there trying to get us gas and fuel is good and honorable, but that is charity. We need something more today. We need justice. <laughs>
most likely even if you take the latest interviews carried out by certain police officers what they say is this is a one off incident which occurs there are 84000 police officers and out of that this is just a one off incident which happens in respect of one uh, particular individual in the police but however i don't think that should be an excuse because brutality is brutality there are laws if these people whoever are suspect are not you know listening to what the police are saying or not cooperating then there are penal sections under which they can you know enforce uh, criminal charges against the suspect rather than trying to take the law into their own hands the human rights violations in sri lanka are totally unacceptable unfortunately the oppression in sri lanka is not new two decades the tamils have been deprived of their fundamental rights and freedom today we send a clear message from the european parliament to the government of sri lanka tens of thousands of tamils families do not know what happened to their loved ones yet this is unacceptable the oppression of human rights in sri lanka must end the oppression of the tamil population must end now the pta has been used against the sinhala youth in 88 89 we saw how that was used against the second jvp uprising and after the easter uh, bomb attack it is being used against the muslim community several important personalities have been arrested and held uh, lawyer hijaz hisbullah uh, the poet anaf uh, former minister rishad badiuddin uh, and several others uh, even azad sali uh, and others have been now made to suffer under the pta uh, i have first hand experience of how evil and unjust the pta can be and today with the latest latest rounds of arrest and detentions that are going on it is absolutely clear that the pta is an unjust law that is selectively applied selectively applied to people that the government whatever the government that is in power at that time wants to shut off and close the door on it's not about uh, preventing terrorism it is not about finding out the truth behind certain criminal acts that have happened in this country pta is not about that pta is about shutting down people and closing the door on them for a very very long period of time and that is not a this is not a law that we need to have in our country my arrest has really opened my eyes to how 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 it really works and how we can really deprive people of their rights and justice The Sri Lankan Police Criminal Investigation Division, renowned for its use of torture. I was going to go there. 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 There's a level of, of perversion and abuse uh which you rarely see certainly in other cases that I've dealt with around the world and and reflects a sickness uh, at the heart of the Sri Lankan security services which appears to be quite common 2017 Ranil Vikramasinghe traveled to Brussels and gave a guarantee he promised that the PTA would be repealed it was on that promise the gsp plus concession that had been taken away from sri lanka was given back now it is 5 years and the pta is still there and now 
has been revived, revived in the same, they have started using it and the same Ranil Vikrama Singh has the distinction of signing three detention orders. a difficult past but we need to focus on the future what's happening right now under the prevention of terrorism act is extremely worrying we're seeing arbitrary detention Ahnaf Jazim this is unacceptable for human rights has to be a clear precondition for trade preferences so I therefore call on the Sri Lankan authorities to repeal the prevention of terrorism act and to focus. I would say that uh, the international community has to be uh, very aware because this is not uh, the PTA is not just a residue of the past. It has been reactivated and extended in a very dangerous way to cover up the crisis of legitimacy. And in the uh, uh, imminent future, it will doubtless be used against trade unionists and the social movement mama e mama mai e ak me mama mai umbat me mama mai mama me umba mai umbat e e mai excessive Sri Lankan governments have been intolerant of dissent it is to prevent people from exercising their freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, all of which, what is the purpose, ultimate purpose? Stay in power. Yeah.